PDSE 2024, ladies and gentlemen. We are here in Toronto, still on the floor, day number three. And we are yeah, still in uranium because we love uranium. And we want to talk now to Tim Rotolo, the CEO of Premier American Uranium. Welcome, Tim. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for taking the time, uh, you know. And you also, we are totally uranium bulls, that's yes. for sure. And uh, I called it already the best investment case in my 40 years uh, career on the stock exchange, I would say. <laughs> I, I would agree with you. We, we're, we're, I don't think that's there's, I don't think there's going to be another opportunity like this in my lifetime. So yeah. that's how we're, I see it here also. It. So let's chat shortly about the market. We saw 107, now back yep. to 93, 95. I would say it's a normal breather, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah the mar markets don't move in 100% increments and not have a pullback. So I think if you, you got to have a long-term belief in the supply-demand imbalance, if you are, this is a great opportunity to be adding to positions that you like. Um, we haven't seen any type of panic from utilities, yeah. and there seems to be a lot of skepticism, which is great. Yeah, you know, that's, the, the that's more, fantastic. You know, so if if you've been in the market since the you know 2020 or 2018, like a lot of folks, this is what we expected to happen. Mm -hmm. So. You, things don't, you know, bull markets don't go in a straight line and uh, you got to know what you own and, you know, have the conviction to continue to add on dips like this. Yeah, exactly. And Phil Williams just told me that uh, there was a news out uh, today from China that they want to go by 2060 to 400 gigawatts. That's yeah. exactly what we have today. Today it's at 414 yeah. or 420 gigawatts I, on Earth. So uh, from where should this all come? That's getting we interesting. Don't know. Yeah. We don't know. And I think uh, Mike Alkin was on, uh, on at a Red Cloud Summit recently, and he was talking about you know, the inability to meet the supply deficit, even with Aero and Kazakhstan. You know, so much has to go right just to begin to fill the supply deficit. Mm -hmm. And so far, things have not been going right. It's, uh, mining is a very challenging business, a very technical business. Yeah. And so you know, supposing, I think utilities continue to suppose that just there's going to be this magical supply that comes in to fill the deficit. And that's before unbelievable announcement like that from China. I don't know if you saw the news out of AWS, but they've acquired uh, a, a Pennsylvania-based nuclear power plant. So now you're seeing big tech who's focused on AI moving into the space before small modular reactors. So the news flow on, from a demand perspective is remarkable. And there hasn't been any news flow around new supply coming. So, yeah. you know, as I, as I said, if you're believers in the structural supply deficit theory or thesis, yeah. this is exactly what we want to see. Yeah, absolutely. Nice. Also, if I look here down there, there is the fission boost, for example. I yep. know 2029 at earliest there on production. Next gen, I would say 2032. Uh, who else do we have in really large amounts? I don't see it. There aren't any. And that's why I think Premier is so well positioned yeah. because... You know, as we advance our project, those pounds are going to be needed. Yeah, you know, definitely. U.S. pounds are going to be needed. Yeah. Who knows what direction the Russian supply yeah. uh, or Russian suspension um, or ban goes. But it, it certainly seems like there's a lot of bipartisan support in the United States yeah. for something along those lines. And that just makes U.S. pounds that much more valuable and interesting. And Western utilities are going to need to source a lot of material to yeah. to fill just the existing supply deficit and if demand continues to grow the deficit will grow and to your point you know fantastic projects at denison and fission and next gen yeah but they're they're still many years away exactly and so you know these historic permitted mines in the u.s and historic resources that are available to companies like ourselves are a tremendous opportunity. Exactly, and that's one of the key points. We need more exploration. We need yep. to speed that up. That's exactly what you are doing. So what's exactly. the work program for this year? So we, we just hired our uh, our drill rig operators for start in July. Um, so we're, we're ready to go. We're just basically waiting for some of the environmental issues that exist in Wyoming around sage grouse. And then we'll be hitting the ground running in uh, in early July and getting okay. the, getting our drill program at uh, at the Cyclone project going. Okay, super. So, how many meters you are planning approximately? Um, it's it's roughly two million dollars our budget. Okay. I, yeah, it's it's going to depend on exactly the direction yeah. that we you know what we're seeing in terms of the drilling. Um, so I don't want to I don't want to give yeah, a specific course, yeah. a specific number, but but what we've allocated is roughly two million dollars. Okay, good, super. Yeah. So what would be the more overall plan, uh, the big picture on your uh, assets? What, yeah, how do big, you see that? Big big picture is Cyclone, you know, our flagship asset. Then working on uh, it, 
kind of thinking through the strategy around work programs for our Colorado assets, mm -hmm. um, which are again, those, those are the DOE leases that we got from ISO Energy. And then what other opportunistic things can we do on the M&A front? Mm -hmm. And I think that's, you know, our partnership with the team at ISO Energy gives us a very unique bit of insight, but also transactional capability to be opportunistic and take advantage of dislocations like we're seeing in the market today mm -hmm. to add really interesting assets to our portfolio. Okay. So, you know, we're, we're going to be looking at both paths on development, exploration, and M&A mm -hmm. for, for the rest of the year. Okay, super. Uh, let's go shortly back to politics because I found yep. that really interesting. I have the feeling that, especially from the US, there is coming a, a huge wave of support, yes. like the IRA for uranium, I would call it. That, look, that looks a bit like to me. So can you also benefit from that when there's something will come up? Yeah. I, so I think the overall nuclear industry was a huge beneficiary of the IRA. Um, I, don't, I don't know if there will be specific support for miners. But I think the overall tailwind and the bipartisan political support in the United States is positive for the entire industry, right? Okay. More demand means you need more supply. And at the end of the day, there aren't a lot of sources to get that supply. And so yeah. that's, that's going to give us access to capital, lower cost yeah. capital, and allow us to go do you know, more exploration. And today, our view is exploration assets are not being valued. Mm. The market, for some reason, doesn't believe yeah. that the world needs more exploration. And you know maybe that's just a short-term blip where you, know, you have fantastic companies like URG and Encore going into production. Mm. And so everyone's focused on these near-term production assets. But you but, need the future also. But you need the future. <laughs> and for some reason, yeah. everyone has decided that yeah. the future is not you know, is, is not as important today as near-term production. Mm -hmm. So again, that puts us in a really unique position as an opportunistic acquirer mm -hmm. to go and try and acquire some additional exploration assets. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously, you know, we're very well situa situated from a capital perspective. Mm -hmm. you know, we have about $5.9 million of cash. That's we, also, we have fantastic investors who will continue to support our exploration. Mm -hmm. um, Sachem Cove, ISO Energy, yeah. Mega Uranium. So... Again, just it's a really great package of not only assets but a team, uh, and and then the platform that we're involved with with ISO Energy. Yeah. So we couldn't be more excited about going into this year. Yeah. So you have only one task this year: really hitting with the drills. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And show us nice results. Well, please. and and I, I I listen. Don't discount us on the M and A front. I think. Yeah, I think, of course. Yeah. You know, I, I think if there's one thing, yeah. you know, the, the the consolidated uranium and now ISO has shown us that the value of accretive M&A. Mm -hmm. um, and so we very much want to follow that playbook mm -hmm. in addition to the exploration and development side. Okay, so. super. Hey, then good luck with that. Thank Let you. the drills turn and please send us uh, some good news. We will. So we can uh, bring them. And uh, I'm a happy shareholder so far. Thank you. And super. it's great to see you in person. Yeah, and finally we made that. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tim. Super. Thank you. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, there was Tim Rotolo, the CEO of Premier American Uranium. And you heard it, the drills are turning here soon. And uh, $2 million are going into the ground. That is fantastic because the U.S. need a lot of uranium here in the future. And Premier American Uranium is one of the parts of that for the future. So check out the company. Thanks for watching us. And bye-bye from PDAC 2024.